Where have you gone in Cindir's Midnight? Well, um, in Aurelius Colors, there are these monsters lurking around the edges of things called right. Beast Men. Yeah. And it was a goal of mine in Aurelius Colors not to let anybody become a stock villain, um, because I don't believe in stock villains. Um, I believe people do things for reasons, and I'm interested in those reasons. So I tried to get into the heads of each of the main characters, but there were still these monsters uh, adding some spice to the mix. And because I've always loved uh, the story of Beauty and the Beast, um, I thought, well, it would be great in the next story, um, now that Aurelia has kind of moved on, uh, to see what happens with the work she's left behind. What if, there we go again, um, <laughs> one of her... Uh, works of art fell into the hands of one of these monsters, uh, what would happen? Uh, and so I sort of jokingly said, so it's a Beauty and the Beast story. Uh, and, but there was something there. I mean, he does meet Jordan the Beast Man in Cinder's Midnight, does meet a beautiful woman named Cinder. Um, in fact, there's several beauties in this story, and there are uh, quite a few beasts as well. Um, but, but ultimately, my Beauty and the Beast story was about the influence of beauty on the heart of a beast man. And could a monster like me, someone with uh, with uh, reckless <laughs> impulses, uh, could could a, could a person who's really messed up um, be changed by the influence of aesthetic beauty, of color, of um, of the heavens declaring the glory of God, so to speak? And so Jordan finds this 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 cloak that Aurelia wove, and it changes him in a way he can't describe. He just knows he longs to see that again. And so he goes looking for more of Aurelia's work. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't just change him, it ends up changing the whole history of that, that work. Visit us online at highcallingblogs.com. Woohoo!